Pertinium Radio, brought to you by Pertinier Outdoors. Your source for the rut update to keep you in the stand and pounding them all season long. Saying all good. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. You know, Here we go. No, I had to. I had, okay. Uh, we're learning. We're learning. Uh, yeah. Okay. We're alive. Wow. That was, that was sketchy. We're here though. You, uh, your, your man cave is coming together very nicely. Big Jim. I was trying to put some finishing touches on in here. Big, uh, big Willie's, uh, on the call in board. All right. I'm good now. All right. So there you go. I'd wear a hat, but I'm trying to brighten the day and, uh, I'm freaking tired as a sum gun. So, oh, look at that. See, this episode of Breeding Radio is brought to you by the Huntworks. If you click the link on the screen, it will take you to the Huntworks website where you can do a little shopping for your tree stand and box blind needs. So, check that out. See, I'm just trying to learn how to use this system here. It's pretty sweet. So, we are, uh, this is uh, Breeding Radio, season three, episode one. Uh, Big Jim and I are getting together here, and we expect uh, a few callers in to uh, chat a little bit. But we just wanted to kick off the whitetail deer season here in New York, get the Breeding and Radio series off the ground, and uh, kind of talk about some expectations, some uh, what we've got planned for vacation uh, this hunting season, kind of what we're uh, what we're all looking at as uh, season gets here. Yeah, I got. Ralph is staring at me on the other side of the computer, like looking like he's ready to jump on my computer at any moment. So concentrate live when you're, you know, just getting mauled by a cat. It is. I'm, I got to try to figure out how to turn your audio up, but welcome big Jim. Thanks for, thanks for joining me. And thanks for being my co-host here of Breedham radio. It's my pleasure. It's Ralph, I an honor to be in your presence for such a podcast. It is. Ralph, get out of here. This is, God, this is awful. He, he did. He just went for the dial. Um, so I guess we're going to, we're going to, we got some listeners tuned in. That's fantastic. I see uh, we got Big Willie there. I'll, uh, Big Willie, hang with us. I will get you on here in just a moment. Uh, Jeremy Dinsmore is on. Thanks, Jeremy, for tuning in. We appreciate it. So I guess we'll, uh, we'll kind of start off real quick with, uh, I guess, it's been a hell of a couple of weeks, Big Jim. You've been dealing with uh, sick dogs, sick kids. I've been dealing with sick kids. And uh, deer season's here this weekend, and I don't know. I'm not prepared. I have not. I, I haven't touched my bow since the end of August when I packed it up to send it to Colorado. So it's uh, it's been a whirlwind. That just came out of the case from the Total Archery Challenge. Yep. <laughs> Literally, you haven't shot it since the Total Archery Challenge? When you're shooting under twenty, you ain't gotta worry about no. too much. No, and you, yeah, you were lights out. And that's that's kind of how I feel. You know, if I can be fifty yard accurate with a with a broadhead, I feel pretty confident from a tree stand at twenty yards and under. So that's my approach as well. That's the Harvey way. I mean, with my panicky and wounded deer in the last ten years, I told myself twenty and in. That worked out great last year, and I don't plan on changing it for this year. Well, that's you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, Big Jim. It was broke, so I did fix it. Yeah, well, you think you did. We'll find out soon enough. Oh, I did. So we uh, last year, you know, for those that are new to follow along with us, we uh, you and I have a friendly competition that has really uh, revved up over the last probably four or five deer seasons. Uh, it was dominated by you the first half of my life. And uh, and now, you know, Big Willie's learning, Slick Willie, excuse me, is learning how to notch some of them tags. So I'm thinking that uh, I'm looking to get back on the winner's board. I think we tied last year, right? We both we had five deer each last year. Is that correct? I just gave it to you in the end. You did. You made a hard push. You tied her up, and I respect that. But And then I lost it because I missed four. Yeah, I was sweating. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing better than that last week of muzzleloader season when you're just waiting for that phone call at dark that shot one, I'm up on I you. I got you. I got you two years ago. Hey, you did. Yeah. Call me on the last day. Text of a doe laying there in the field dead. You were like, "You son of a bitch!" Yeah, I stole that thing right off of Google. Yeah, it was a fake image, fake news. Mm -hmm. So, 
I guess real quick, let's just run through what our uh, what our seasons look like. We don't need to go into too much depth. Um, but what do you got planned for vacation time this deer season? Uh, any trips up north planned? Anything like that out of the ordinary? Uh, we're doing the as far as I know, we're doing the early muzzleloader hunt up north. I believe that's the weekend of the 16th this year. Um, we're going to go up and do that. I know Tim and Chris and I have done that the last few years. Um, normally David joins us and last year he brought a buddy. So um, hopefully uh, <clears throat> that continues on this year. I plan on going. Uh, it's a good way to stay out of your good archery spots here locally. Stay busy and uh, going to do that. And then. I'm not going to take a full week this year for the rut. I'm going to kind of split it up and make some long weekends and hit some days that I know are, have been tried and true in some of our good areas. So, um, going to kind of dabble do you here and there, try to hunt smarter, not harder. I would like to take a week off, but, uh, I think a lot of times when you take a week off, you get into doing other stuff because you're on vacation. So right. thinking if we can dab a couple of days here and there to make long weekends, uh, and really focus in on the times that we normally have good luck. I think I'm going to shoot for that. So which which weekends during archery? You, I think you and I are planning on the same weekends. It's yeah, the, I think the 28th. Um, yep, that's a Thursday. I think I'm going to take that Thursday, Friday, or Friday, Monday, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, make a long weekend there. Uh, the 28th is when I shot my buck last year. Um, and me and you doubled up the year before that on the 28th. I think it was a year before that or was it two years before that? I forget. It was 2018. It was the year Billy was born. Yeah. Yeah. So we doubled up on that. And then, uh, I think after that, I'm going to be in a tree stand on the ninth because our property on the ninth, the last two years when Frank and beans was around. Um, our property was absolutely on fire. Was it the ninth or the seventh? Um, it was the ninth. Yeah, it was the ninth. So I was in the tree stand. It was so two years ago. It was snowing, mm-hmm. and last year it was seventy-five. Yeah, and both years on the ninth, it was just fire. So I'm gonna make sure I'm sitting in a tree stand on our property on that day. Um, and then other than that, I'll probably take Thanksgiving week off. Um bop around do some different hunting in different spots there um and then other than that we'll just kind of have to see i'd like to do that late muzzleloader if they stick it if they leave it there the late season i'd like to stay on there so i like the end of the season i've typically had really good luck in the last week when everybody quits and calls it a season yep did you so did you take off that that week for between christmas and new year's I haven't taken anything off as of official. I mean, really, I just need a couple of days in advance. And, yeah. Um, I kind of have it laid out on a calendar. That's a pretty slow a time for work, really. Yeah. I mean, start of school and end of school is normally when everybody's looking to get all their work done. So yeah, you get in around vacations and holidays and you tend to slow down on the road. So I try to take time around that and that'll leave us, you know, Thanksgiving is really got to take three days to get five days off and Christmas, I think four days to get five days off. Mm -hmm. So um, I'd like to try to take both those weeks off, but I'm just kind of going to lay and wait. Hopefully we uh, whack one early here. Yeah. And then we won't even have to do that. Yeah. You've got a, you've had a lot of action on the trail cameras, especially lately. Um, And same thing here. I've also had, uh, I'll share when you're done talking, I'll share my latest on trail cam shenanigans that i don't think you know about yet but oh, i uh, might have had a couple of phone calls today oh did you okay yeah what no. you all right well first you've got some good stuff you you and the guys in uh livingston county will say have got uh some good stuff going on the farmland out there so you got some high expectations for early season huh yeah i got the spot close to the house here um really it's been small bucks and does here and there along the corn I kind of got just a little elbow I can hunt in there, and uh, I have one stand. I could put a ground blind in there if I wanted to, but at this point, I think I'm just going to work the wind and hunt the stand I got there and keep an eye. I got two cell cams, so anything coming and going on either side of my stand in there, I kind of know about. Uh, I had good bucks all the way up till about August, 
and then I lost the bachelor group. I didn't, I don't know where they went. I think they were out back in the clover more towards the highway. Mm -hmm. Um, and then actually as of like the last two days tonight in particular, um, it kind of took off over there. Um, I had bucks hitting the mock scrapes, uh, feeding right along the corn. Uh, what, what I found interesting was, is that I wasn't getting a ton of does on camera. And then out of nowhere, like yesterday morning, I started having does filtering through there like crazy. And then tonight the bucks hit. So I don't know if they all kind of just started to migrate back that way. I haven't been over there. I don't know if they did something with the clover or if they plowed some stuff up. I have no idea, but something shifted. I don't know if there's acorns coming down, but uh, something shifted over there in the last 48 hours and it came on hot. So yeah, I got that going. And then the other piece in uh, Livingston County, we'll say, I'm not really looking to hunt that yet. I got a cell camera in there. Uh, I got a piece I'm looking at, but um, I'm going to stay out of there for a while. And really, we're not going to get hunting heavy archery until the weekend of the 23rd, I think. I think we're going to kind of stay out. I'm going to go up north the next two weekends. Um, and then Friday night for the opener, um, going over to a farm in Menden that um, – mm. Yeah, we've had permission on forever. Um, luckily, through Dad's buddy there, so he wants to get out bright and early and get after it. So I don't really know what's over there. We haven't had any trail cams, but the field's corn, and uh, we're right up against it, and the corn is destroyed. So yeah, you guys think you jumped a bear in there last week, right? Yeah, that was a little hairy. <laughs> yeah, because uh, you know normally you hear deer take off and they'll trot away. Mm-hmm. And, you know, cornfields are pretty bare on the bottom. So you hear them like jumping and hitting the ground. This thing just bulldoze the corn. And then we heard the couple of growls at us and it didn't make us feel too comfortable. But no, uh, that was that was an interesting experience, to say the least. But uh, I think we're, I'm going to go start over there Friday and then Saturday. I think I'm going to hit the farm here close to home. And then uh, after that, I think I'll start spacing it out a little more. Just excited, excited to get the first couple of sits in. So yeah, I I just pulled up the weather and uh, Friday looks like the day because Thursday. Would have well, been Thursday nice. would have been the day. Yeah, yeah. for high of fifty eight, low of forty one. Um, it was thirty nine at my house this morning. That was it felt good. Um, yeah, it was low forties all day, almost down in the southern tier. Yeah, they were calling for. Uh, Earlier in the week, they were calling for a northeast wind on Friday, which is not really ideal for this time of year. It's not really worth going after anything, but they're saying straight west, light west right now. Yeah, they changed it. It was north northwest here, mm-hmm. and then they changed it. It's, it's showing straight west now, which is fine for really both the spots that I want to hunt. So Yeah. Nice. Yeah, so your, your approach is going to be – you're not going to go too aggressive into your areas. You're just going to kind of pick away at the outskirts. Are you looking to shoot a buck this weekend? Are you looking to shoot a doe? Oh, I'm just going to bury it right in there. In anything? Just going to go, just go for the gold. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. I'm going to, I'm shooting anything. I don't care. I won't shoot a little buck, but if a big buck walks by. Yeah. Takes the pressure right off. Mm-hmm. You've done it before. Mm-hmm. It's not fun not having a buck tag the whole season, but it is, uh, nice to not have that pressure yeah and then your wife can force you to do all kinds of shit you don't want to do which is great i can go pick pick pumpkins yeah pick pumpkins drink cider have some yeah. freaking pumpkin lattes yeah oh yeah i mean that really sounds like the best fall to me does really does yeah so my pretty much for me everything you said for my plan uh almost exactly lines up for the season i'm gonna be kind of picking a couple days here and there each I'm gonna try to get out maybe a night each week maybe a morning every once in a while um weekends I'm gonna be real selective and really not push things here at the home front um especially early and we're going camping the second weekend uh down at uh, Lake Erie State Park so that'll be you know that's a whole weekend out and um but that's fine, and and I'm I'm more focused towards you know I do love that end of October like you talked about, so I'm going to take that Thursday Friday off and try to try to negotiate a, a a Thursday Friday Saturday away at camp and then home on Sunday to to be there for for Halloween maybe even home Saturday night 
I don't know what night would be trick or treating, but um, that's kind of how I think I'm going to play that because we've had just incredible luck. If you can get vacation time, take that time, uh, especially like a Thursday or a Friday. Uh, a Thursdays especially seem like man, if you can get out there, you know, before the weekend and beat, you know, even if you're hunting private land, just the other people that are hunting that property with you, if you can get in there before they do, um, yeah, you know, maybe without a four wheeler, don't drive the truck into the property you know, maybe be a little bit more stealthy and strategic getting in there. It really seems to be a huge benefit. So, you know, that's, that's my approach for archery. And I got, I think I, I picked two more days uh, to take off during archery, just like single days. Um, I think uh, veterans day falls kind of on an awkward day this year. I think it's a Thursday. Um, so I think I might've taken, um, I don't know if I, I don't know if I took that Thursday or Friday off, doesn't matter, but kind of picking some days. And then the Friday before the opener, a gun, uh, so that I got one last chance to hunt if I need to, uh, before gun season starts. And, and then we'll have our, you know, a couple days off during gun early. And then I'll end up, uh, going to Pennsylvania for our normal trip. That's the weekend of the second. So like the second through the fifth, we'll be in Pennsylvania. We got, um, two cab, two cabins rented this year. We've got, looks like right now we've got about 15 guys confirmed, but it could be anywhere is upwards of 20 by the time we're all said and done. So we're really excited about our PA deer camp this year. It's going to be pretty badass. each year. It's gotten better and better. Last year was a little bit down because of the whole <clears throat> COVID situation. Um, I feel like we have kind of gone, we're not past it. Obviously we know that I don't even really want to discuss that on here. Freaking deer got it. Now. I know, but see, I think that's a positive because that just shows that the deer are fine. You know, they're fine. They're yeah. strong. Yeah, I don't know what to make of that whole report. I, I, I read a, I read another, you know, another article on it. It hasn't been peer reviewed. It, it has no. It's, it's a brand new. It's, it's just, you know, it's just typical. You know, they're gonna get some data on something and push it out there. And they were talking way back in the beginning of COVID that that um, farm raised animals were able to get it. You know, pigs and cattle. It's, yeah, it's not a surprise. You know, and if people are out there, if people are out there in central park making out with deer yeah you're gonna freaking give them covid it's gonna happen you know if that's what you're into i'm not here to judge you but don't freaking don't get on your high horse you know but anyway no, I don't. so pa deer camp should be kept pretty kick-ass this year really looking forward to it and uh and we'll have more to come with that i'm sure uh both on breeding radio and on our regular Burton your outdoors podcast so we got that and then i did i took off that whole week between christmas and new year's um, I will bring up on here, uh, anybody that's listening, I talked about it on the intro to the podcast, uh, maybe like two episodes ago that there's a, a public, uh, comment period now open where they, you know, we all kind of thought that that, that late season hunt was a lock between Christmas and new year's, but it sounds like they're actually going out to take public comment, which is a little bit nerve wracking, especially if you live in some of the counties out here in Western New York, um, Wyoming, Chautauqua, Cattaraugus, um, Erie, um, I guess I kind of, well, maybe Allegheny, but maybe not, but the area where lake effect snow is, I, my biggest concern is snowmobilers. Um, and I know you're a big snowmobiler, Jim, but Freaking snowmobilers. I know, but it's, it's, uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's necessary to, you know, not give this season a try and see how it goes. Um, but there's obviously some powers, uh, powers to be that are, pushing back on that and saying we should have more public comment, which I feel like they already had enough, but they're going to ask for more. So if you are, you know, if you are somebody, what regardless of whatever side you're on, they're asking for your comment. So, you know, email, you know, you can go on and search. I, I should have that stuff on here to provide live, but I don't. Um, if you just go on and, and search that on any of the Facebook groups or just go and search New York DEC and uh, public comment period for the late season, I'm sure something will come up and you can email that, uh, that address and maybe even somebody will drop that in the uh, comment board. If there's people actually paying attention um, to what we're talking, we've got 10 people logged in, Jim, this is a big deal. I mean, it's like, it's like 10 times more than what we had the first time we did this. So um, just from a snowmobilers aspect, like, yeah, please. I mean, we're not even riding until after Christmas up North, you know, on good snow. up North. Yeah. Off I mean, it's been several years now since we've had snow to ride before deer season even ended. So, um, I'd like to see them give it a try. I mean, we might catch the random lake effect 
but I mean, if you go out and ride, you're going to beat that down to nothing in a matter of one night of riding. So, um, I don't think that early in the snowmobile season is really something that I would be too concerned about because typically I don't even get my sled out until after Christmas. Um, so I, I mean, were they doing this holiday hunt like the entire state or was it just, no, it's just the Southern zone. So it's everything okay, so south. So I it has nothing that. to do if with. If you want to ride that bad, you get on your sled and go up north. Yeah, that's what I said to Dallas. Uncle Dallas, maybe we should get Uncle Dallas on here because he had some. And we'll just, you know what? We'll just open it up. We'll bring Big Willie and Dallas in and just let this thing oh, just boy. go wild. But Big Willie, just hold yourself. I know you want to just spout off. Uh, oh, we he's love just you. Been messaging boarding it up. And yeah, he's over he's there. one of those. Uh, he's in his basement right now on the message boards. Uh, oh, Dallas, I know you were. Daniel's on here. Dunning yeah, Dan's on. He's representing. Yeah, we got to give Daniel a shout out. Well, that kid is a hard working son of a bitch. He's Dan's monitoring us to make sure that we're you know not misrepresenting his brand. So I understand that. Uh, Dallas, can you give us your uh, perspectives on uh, this whole late season thing? Because you were fairly fired up last week. Yeah, I was a little bit fired up last week. Just, Are you still fired up? Really, I'm always fired up. <laughs> I mean, if you got hate in your heart, let it out. That's right. Yeah. No, I actually, um, I just, I do think it's a little bit dangerous to allow public comment to be controlling some of these things, you know, especially when it's not even coming from deer hunters. I, I think it kind of sets a bad precedent. Um, but I, I, and I do see it from the snowmobiler side. It, it, and Jimmy's right, I agree that um, they typically aren't going to ride at that time anyways, but I talked to... Uh, a few more people this week and I actually had a good point made on the other side is that the big deal for them really is getting their trails set up Mm. so they can't do it in September because there's crops everywhere and then when the crops come off in October it's already deer season so some property owners will let them go and do their trail work during the deer season but other places there's examples of entire blocks where they won't let the snowmobile guys in to mark the trails and you know they've got to fix bridges and washouts and trim the trails you know down trees all that kind of stuff so you know it's if they have to wait till january to do that sometimes it, that's going to make it harder on them and then in of course it's only an extra week so i don't know does it make that big a difference or not i don't know but i never thought about the trail prep side of things as much as just the riding if you're someone that just rides the trails i don't think it should affect you that much i kind of feel like that i've i've seen in the past the signage is going out like earlier than the end of deer season i think if you get into the end of deer season to do your signage you're gonna have no frozen the ground it's gonna be hard to put in stakes in and everything well that's the problem though is that most on private ground they still have to have permission to go out there and put the signs up in the in the <clears> trails and everything. So most of the ground in Wyoming County, actually all of the snowmobile ground in Wyoming County is private ground. It's all farmers. So they still have to let you in to do that. You can't just be like, well, I'm going to go mark my trails on, you know, October 30th on Saturday afternoon. You can't just decide that without permission. I mean, it's a great point. I, I never thought about that. It makes perfect sense. And I can respect some that guys will, that opinion. You some know. guys will let them do it at night, but that can't be too much fun doing that job at night either. So, no, I that, think you got to be able to see long distances and where the corners are and stuff like that for market snowmobile trails. So it's really a day job. I think, like Billy said, though, let's give it a shot. I mean, we should try it, and if it, if there ends up being conflict or maybe we learn something, then maybe we need to reassess it. But uh, the big the big thing that I see with not only the holiday hunt but also the youth hunt they're allowing counties to have the same opportunity to opt out on that too and one of the reasons they did this holiday hunt is for youth hunting because kids aren't going to be in school that week that's a big deal that you know the future of our sport i mean let's face it if we don't get kids into hunting there's not going to be much hunting left after a while or but you know if a kid's 12 years old and they're ready to go out with a mentor let them do it you know, I mean, we're now you're now you're giving the counties the opportunity to opt out. That a public comment from who? From people who don't even aren't even familiar with these issues necessarily. I think that that's the part I worry about. Yeah. 
all, they're all good points. And I think that's, you know, those are the things like Dallas and I were talking, those are the things that the feedback that needs to be given, you know, from our perspective. And I, I don't think it hurts as a hunter to also voice your understanding of the challenges uh, of the, the uh, you know, the snowmobile community, which I would assume is where most of the kickback is coming from. Um, and, ma- yeah. you know, maybe some good feedback for the DEC is it would be nice for us to, un- you know, I know they say, hey, here's the, you know, the freaking – 3,200 comments that they received, but who, I mean, let's be honest, who has time to read that? I don't, um, you know, you've shown me somebody that's got time to do that. I'll show you somebody that's got too much damn time on their hands. So if they could give us the, you know, a quick synopsis of exactly why, you know, there is opposite opinions there, that would be. I mean, it might not even be the snowmobilers that much, to be honest with you. I mean, I don't, I'm all over the place and I'm not hearing people bitch about it. Right. Yeah. Neither am I. Um, and a lot of the snowmobilers are hunters, so they're they're like. Eh. Well, that's the thing is it kind of goes hand in hand. I felt like when you were bringing up snowmobilers, I'm like a lot of snowmobilers I know are hunters as well. So yeah, uh, it's the snowmobilers. Yeah, <laughs> it is. I mean, that's the only that's the only logical thing. And I've talked to several of them, and and most of them are they're, they're understanding of both sides too. And that's you know most of us think there should be a compromise there where if we do happen to have enough snow to open the trails during that week, then. We, then I think most hunters would be okay with having them open at night. Just let them, just let them ride when the uh, hunting hours are not open. You know, for that week. I, I, every snowmobiler I've talked to and hunter has been. It seems like we could come to an agreement there. Yeah. So that might be something to look at too. That would make it really hard to hunt at night. <laughs> or <it's> Captain Obvious. <laughs> Jesus, Jim. <laughs> Someone had to say it. Uh, Big Willie, are you on the horn? Big Willie, the floor is yours. Big Willie's on the horn. Oh, there you are. How are you? Are you in the basement? No, I'm in my recliner. Oh, so you're not asleep yet? Watching the Braves. What's the score? Braves up 3-1 to one over Philly. Nice. Uh, speaker phone? No, do you want me to be? No, I, don't know, I can't hear you. You just don't well. sound real, real good. But that's probably because you have a phone that's twelve years old. They don't mark my phone. I know. So I could stop talking about it. How's that? Yeah, you you could. That that's great. I'm sure Mom will love that. What's uh? What do you got on the on your agenda? I'm sure you don't have a whole lot of uh, you know, time in your uh, your foreseeable future to to take time off and hunt. But uh, what's your expectations for the deer season? I know you've done some. Some purchasing from the hunt works with some new uh some new box blinds and uh new tree stand. So you must be somewhat excited for the deer season. Yeah, I'm looking forward to trying those out and uh you know the snowmobile late season thing really intrigues me because I can't help but think that there's gotta be some sort of middle ground, you know, there's a lot of property, uh, especially over in our neighborhood where we hunt Ontario County, where there are no snowmobile trails. And I can't help but wonder if it wouldn't be feasible. I don't even know if it's possible maybe to have a, a buffer or something. You know, you're not allowed to hunt within 1,000 feet of an active trail or something. Yeah. Um, but how do, you know, you ma- how do you manage that, you know? Well, I think the same thing shoot within a certain distance of a highway or house, right? So um, there's trail maps available. You can see them. There's, there's a lot of state land that uh, have zero snowmobile trails through there. I just... I think there's got to be a way to do both, and you don't want to be uh, disrespectful to the snowmobilers. If, if you think about it, there may be, you know, traditions there where people, uh, you know, depending on conditions, take off that holiday week and, and snowmobile with their families. Mm-hmm. Um, but as you guys have said, I think it's, it, there's got to be a way to make it work and, and give it a try. And uh, I know I'm often on that holiday hunt, and I wrote you know, quite a lengthy uh, comment on the deer management plans that they had recently and submitted that. And I was very much in favor of, a, of that holiday hunt or some sort of a later season hunt. Um, so I, I'm excited about that because quite honestly, in my line of work, that's like the best shot I have of taking a week off and, and getting out there and doing some, some additional hunting. And uh, so... It'll be interesting to see where that goes, and I will weigh in on comments there, but there, there has to be a way. If, if that is indeed, is that definite that that's where the, well, they're, the uh, questions they're, come about? They're taking public comment, and it's a it's a county by county. I mean, 
if Ontario County says we almost never open, we're, we're not, you know, we have more of, more of a need to, to hunt deer than we do to snowmobile in that week. You know, Ontario County can make that decision. But, you know, I think the concern is more in the counties where it's likely that there is snowmobiling opportunity. But Yeah, and as uh, Dale said, this is a great opportunity for recruitment, and not only for kids that are, uh, you know, school age, high school age, but also for uh, college students that are home for the holidays. And, and uh, you know, people like myself that can't get away from work, but, you know, things are shut down during that time period. So it's a, it's a great opportunity. Maybe they're just gathering further public comment before they cement the reg. I don't know. Um, right. But I, I would urge everybody to take the opportunity to share your thoughts. They're asking. And uh, they will listen if you, you know, share your, your thoughts and, and ideas with them. So um, I, I hope to see that come come to be. I think that would be a great new tradition. And also, you, you look at their management objectives with herd harvest and where they're at with the numbers. And uh, I think it may also play into Yep. Especially in the southern zone, that's why they're talking the southern zone. And you look at some of these areas where the, uh, the new management plan is where their harvest objectives are increased, and they have to look at how to achieve those objectives, right? And manage the herd better. Yeah, I think those are all those are all the factors there, and I think you know to round out around that, I think that's our you know our major concern is that the we really you know you don't want to see in all situations, it's important for public comment, but we're talking, you know, for them, I think it's managing the herd and making a scientific decision based on what needs to be done. And when you start, you know, it's the same thing we saw in Colorado with the wolves. That was not a, it was not a, a, a biological science decision. It was an emotional decision and a, and a public vote that is bringing wolves into Colorado. So same sort of thing. And you start to see that stuff happen across the country. Um, you know, it, it makes, uh, it makes people nervous that, you know, there's a lot more people that don't hunt than people that do hunt. So we'll see. And uh, I think we've we've hammered that over the head enough uh, that we can uh, move along. Um, and I did put in the comments the email uh, if somebody is interested in giving feedback there. It's wildliferags at dec.newyork.gov. So we'll let them know what you think. Um, where do we want to go next? Anybody, anybody got any topics they want to we got cover? got a question on the chat board here from Daniel Dunnigan. He said, are we a bigger fan of the new early season antler list or the holiday hunt? Holiday. I'm going to go holiday too. I just, uh, you know, the early antler list is, uh, is another nice opportunity, but I just, you know, and some of it's just my, you know, my whole life, bow hunting, you know, uh, myself and Uncle Mike, we know archery season opens October 1st. For us, it opens October 15th. It just doesn't feel right bow hunting earlier. And uh, quite honestly, I'm never ready earlier. So ever since the season dates have changed, I, I still don't start until around the 15th. And I know I was talking to Dan's uncle, uh, Steve, and, and he kind of feels the same way. But at the same time, we talk about opportunity, right, and getting guys field and you know that's just another another opportunity for people to get out so you know some people might be more interested in that than they are in the holiday that's a good question Dan. yep i'm on i'm on the same page with you guys but what i love about what they've done with this is that you're you're they're putting this out there and at the end of the day i think it is about it's getting more hunters but it's also it's meeting objectives as far as is deer you know, the deer count and the population kills stuff like that. And I think the people that really wanted to get out, the people that were, whether it was, I saw a lot of like on some of these pages, I saw a lot of disabled hunters that got out and were able to hunt and it wasn't cold. They were able to be out there with a crossbow or with a rifle. Like that's fantastic. I mean, that's, those are and even like with the crossbow. I mean, it's opportunities for people to get out and use that in the early season. If they want to go out and do that, if, if they can't use a compound in a vertical bow, so to me personally, I think it's, I'm a bigger fan. I will probably, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I it, maybe once the kids are old enough, they keep that hunt around, we might hunt that. But I don't think, you know, we want to go badgering around our property, you know, even though it was in the zone where we could hunt. I don't think we really wanted to go up there and, and do that because 
I mean, we've got a good thing going there right now with the cameras and what they're showing us. We don't want to booger that up any sooner than we no. need to, you know. That that was funny because, like, I, we were hunting, me and Adam, um, we went up and hunted the farm a little bit that he's got that's near camp. And uh, I'm sitting there watching deer 400 yards across the field. And I'm getting pictures from our cutting link system, a deer walking by my tree stand at 10 yards over on our property. But uh, yeah, I mean, we got a consistent doe group over there that we didn't really want to disturb. So no. we left that alone there. But I mean, it, if you look at it, um, there's certain places where that's, that's a good thing. I mean, the farm we were hunting, I mean, the deer were literally destroying the farmer's pot- potatoes. I mean, they'd come through, they'd dig them all up. They'd take one bite and move on. And the farmer was like, please go shoot deer. And we went and sat several hunts down there and there was deer everywhere. There was a couple shots and misses and it didn't even bother them. And they were right back out there the next night or they were right back out there by the time you left. I mean, the deer were clueless and they could have cared less. Um, Adam ended up getting the doe. Um, I got some really good footage that I got to get up of prior to my shot. Um, yeah, what's we with have, you missing? You were talking shit about Adam, and then you go and miss with a rifle yeah. on a rest. You know what Trigger says, if you love something, set it free. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. But uh, I got some really cool footage. Uh, me and Jonesy spent a night in the blind together, and we had a freaking ride. I mean, we had a little one come out at like 10 yards next to the blind, um, and then we had a bachelor group come out, and then the does came out. And I had a lot of good footage until I had to take the camera off the tripod to try to make a shot. Um, and then everything just turned into a giant shit show from there. But uh, it, it was it was fun getting out early. I can see the use for it in certain spots. The one thing that I was a little miffed by is that they had that season in 8N and not 8H. Because 8H, yeah. I right. feel the, the population is through the roof. And you go to 8N and... It might be in pockets, but it's not near what it is in 8H, I don't think, personally. No, I, I, I yeah, I, that's something I'd like to get some feedback from the DEC on. Something should probably, you know, wouldn't hurt to write him an email and find out. Maybe I'll task myself that why 8N. Well, I not. think part of the problem there is the management zones are so big that you're looking at one particular area in 8H and you're seeing a, a – population explosion and then but then you know the half of it might be where they don't have a problem so i it's hard to target these areas they're just such big zones that i think it's just it is they're, they're never managing down to a property or a or a block you know if you could do that it would be more effective but they have to they have to pick such a big area to focus on it that's i think that's the issue there yeah i mean eight h is almost all ag land i mean almost that entire well area i was wondering if it's because 8h is so populated and more rural that it's maybe they don't want they people want rifle people hunting. out there with rifles good in point. september letting them fly god you're smart jim my god i mean that that was the only thing that i could figure yeah pert near it's crazy when you think it's amazing the stuff that comes out of your head it's freaking crazy um I'm drinking up blue lights and all sorts of shit will come out of here <laughs> yeah do you see those new Bush light cans that are like Sitka pattern? What the hell? I bought a 30-pack of that tonight. Yeah, I bought a 30-pack. Yeah, it's just sitting on top of the freezer. I don't know when I'm going to put it in the refrigerator, but I'll drink it when we kill something. Uh, let's move on to uh, Uncle Dallas. Uh, Slick, Big Willie, you got anything else Anything else for us, or are you just along here for the ride? The only other thing I would uh, end with as we talk about antlerus is uh, – you know, you talk about emotional decisions, right? People making decisions based on emotions. But, but the uh, I've become emotionally attached to our does. <laughs> Maybe it's an old age thing, but I'm just watching them every single day. I was I got a little fun. I saw it like the day it was born it was brand new, and I watched it. It's like it's just weird being you know this new putty back system. And they have so many cameras. I also have uh, I have another camera that I that I run the cellular and uh, just watching them all the time. I almost just feel bad, you know, shooting one of them. So I'll go uh, somewhere in 8-H and harvest my dose there. Yeah, that's – you're on the other end of the spectrum, Willie. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like shooting our dose. I like my dose. Yeah, well, this is coming from the guy that I've seen shoot the smallest deer. <laughs> and 
<laughs> now all of a sudden he's a softy over here. I don't know, Billy. Did he, ever, did he ever carry one out on his backpack? Billy? Yeah, I know Several. he's carried him out over his shoulder. Yep. Several. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, in the pocket of his hoodie, I think, actually. The <laughs> game pouch. <laughs> yeah. All right. No, I agree. Yeah, I, I agree, good. Dad. It is kind of cool to see, uh, you know, you you all these camera pictures. I mean, you get very in tune with what's going on with your deer. We That group of does has literally got to be betting five feet off of that food plot and just on that thing all day long. So They're, they're in there every three to four hours. It's amazing to watch. Yep. Like you said, they got to be betting deer, but you know you listen to these different podcasts. They talk about the the deer's uh, need to you know feed frequently throughout the course of the twenty four hour period. How many hours they feed? I mean, it's really something to watch to see that they they're moving through and eating like clockwork. At, you know, every four hours or so. And uh, I mean, I've never seen deer like bed on our food plots, and there's several times I've gone up there to either mess with a camera system or mow and they're literally laying on the edge of the food plot. And there's one picture of me on the four wheeler where I literally had to run the deer out of the food plot to drive by it. And then there was the second set of pictures where I was seating it at like five Oh five. I was mowing it at five twenty, And by the time I stopped mowing at the other end of the food plot and started down the hill, there was three does peeking over the hill watching me. So it's like they are literally just standing there. They don't care what's going on. They just wait for you to move off, and then they come in. Yeah, that's going to change as soon as we start driving trucks to the cabin every weekend and driving four wheelers up the hill first thing in the morning. Maybe it won't. I don't know, but I, I have a feeling it will. It'll just drive them up the side hill a little bit, probably. Yeah, the interesting probably. thing is, I think we're really pushing them back in the deep off. You know, as long as we have the density and the, and the cover, they're laying there. You know, when we're. You say, well, it's the hunting pressure, but keep in mind that, you know, Mike's in there, and, you know, every single weekend all year long, he's getting logs out with a tractor, running back and forth with a four-wheeler, hauling, hauling loads of wood out, and uh, they come right out, and see him go, like Jimmy said, he'll go through food plots, and 15 minutes later, the deer is feeding, you know. Yeah. So what you're saying is we need Uncle Mike to continue doing firewood all the way through deer season and not hunt at all. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I think we need to use the Kubota tractor to get to uh, get to our stands and stuff. You know? Well, that would be a good way to transition to the old deer farmer, Uncle Dallas, because that's the old trick on the farm is just drive the old fent right out there with the gigantic eight tires on it and just drive it right out to the stand, right, Dallas? That's one way to do it. Where have we seen this before? You guys got a gleaner out there? A gleaner. <laughs> No gleaners. What was that old tractor you guys used to have that you said Brian tells a story that it used to run on one cylinder or whatever? Sami. Sami, yep. <laughs> you know, I just got to tell you, Dallas, I love you, but your brother is radio gold. You know that? <laughs> I mean, I don't think there's a more entertaining. Maybe it's just me, but I think he might be one of the funniest people I've ever met in my entire life. Yeah, it's just you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's your it's your brother. Why would you think he's funny? I just can't get enough. Hey, if you can get him to keep his stories under, you know, a half hour, yeah, they're good. Yeah, yeah, you know. So, Uncle Dallas, um, what do you got? Uh, I well, you and I talked this morning on the phone. We're pretty we're pretty excited about this deer season for a lot of the same reasons that we are for our hunting camp up in Naples. We just got. We've done it. We and mainly you have done a ton of work on the property, and we're gonna have a whole separate discussion about that, but. Where's your uh, expectations for the season and what what you see coming down the pipe? You got any time off planned, I guess, kind of run through your season? I haven't reserved a lot of time yet. My time is fairly flexible. I don't think I'm taking any big blocks off this year, but uh, I took the three days for Pennsylvania, you know, the annual hunt, but then also I took the last two days of October off with the idea of tentatively going to bow hunt Pennsylvania and do some scouting a new area down there. Other than that, um, you know, I might have a couple of single days off, but I'm probably just going to play it by ears. See how the season's going and uh, see, you know, try to predict with the weather a little bit when it's time to take an extra day or two off because 
feel like, you know, I've been burned by that before where I go ahead and schedule a week off or a, a four day weekend or something. And then it comes time to take your vacation and it's, and it's, it's either raining or just, you know, the, the weather's not cooperating with you or something like that. So I don't know my time at work is somewhat flexible. So I'm going to just see how it's going, I guess. As far as, uh, as far as this property at the farm, it's funny because we, we've done so much work this year, but um, I'm excited the way the property's coming along, but at the same time, I don't really have anything I want to target there yet, so I'm kind of in wait and see mode. I'm hoping that post rut that uh, something new will move in, and maybe before that too, but I'm almost sure that in the late season when the food gets scarce that the mature buck will move in here and we'll be able to pick them up on the cutty backs and go after them, so... Yeah, kind of been wait and see on this property, so I don't have as many places to hunt as you and Big Jim have. For God's sakes, sounds like you got half of uh, Western New York. We're just very personable people. people, you know. We're net, we're yeah. networkers, you know. Yep, I'm just lucky. It's better to be lucky than good. <laughs> no, I think we're kind of in the same spot at Camp Dallas. Uh, we had some bucks good up into July, and then I think the corn came on pretty good in a couple different areas around us, and we have gotten like zero bucks on camera in the last two months. I think we just started getting a couple of spikes or four points on camera. But, yeah, uh, and it's not unusual for you guys though, right? No, I mean, what I thought was going to happen is I thought with the food plots and the TSI and all the new cover, I thought they would stick around, but I think the crop overran us that's nearby and i think they're just off hanging out in the crop right now but um typically you get into beginning to middle of october and that's when they start showing up on our place um there was yeah. one that i think would be a definite target that we got on camera um in july and then he disappeared he was hanging there right through july and then he bounced off and he was a big eight or nine then but i mean he had some growing to do and he was already a butte so that's the only one i got up there that i know about yeah oh i can actually show uncle dallas on it we can have three people on here but it sounds like you're driving you going to work dallas or i'm you in the truck you're just sitting in the i was truck. working and i just came out to talk to my <laughs> friends and then i'm going back to work and then i'm going to my other work so. it's not easy being a Third generation deer farmer. Yeah, that's like my fifth job. I know. Just keeps you. Did spend a lot of time on that this year, though. So things are looking good, though. I think. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna. We'll, you and I will get together and do a, a whole separate podcast on some of the stuff we've worked on there, and you know what we've seen so far, and it's uh it's outstanding. So I'm very excited to see what the season brings, and I think I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go upstairs and try to sweet talk the wife and to let me hunt Friday instead of. Saturday night or Sunday night because Friday looks like the night. So might have to dip out, try to shoot an old flathead or one of those bucks that walks by that's not on the uh, no-fly list. Yeah. I don't, I don't usually get too excited about hunting early October, but when, you, when you're seeing the activity that we've been and then you see the weather forecast looking somewhat favorable, I mean, I'm definitely – going to try to get out there for at least a couple of hunts this weekend i think start maybe starting friday night so yeah now let me ask you this dallas we don't we don't have too many cameras on the, the like the far east side of the hardwoods over towards the creek but do you think it seems like the deer are moving um it i mean i guess we don't have any cameras over there but it certainly seems like the deer aren't hanging over there quite as much it seems like they must be hanging more in the hard you know from the back to the to the middle of the hardwoods and out to the front doesn't it Yeah, I'm just wondering with the west wind where we could get into that, you know, early in the season like this where they might not be over uh, in that, you know, in that timber. You know what I mean? Yeah. The brain's a turning. Mm. Did you get that uh, that whole that whole side uh, hedgerow there on the east side? Did you get that whole thing chopped down like a good boy? No. No? What the hell you been doing, Dallas? Just overseeding and overseeding? God's sake. Yeah, I just, I'm just food plotting. I took you over and cut some trees down over there, thinking you might take the ball and run with it. 
That was the last time I did anything at the farm. And I, what was that? That had to have been middle of July. Oh, it was August. Was it August? Yeah, I don't even remember. Yeah, it's been a summer. There's been deer on uh, a lot of daylight deer the last week or so on camera. So definitely looks looks promising as far as deer activity. Yeah. For what it's worth, I don't know. We will find out. It's been, on, been on camera in the daylight a lot, though. So, are you planning on going out this weekend or no? Yeah, I think I'll get a couple of hunts in this weekend, just just based on the camera activity and the uh, the weather. You know, might be f- like the mornings should be good and cold. So, yeah, it might be a a fun uh, Sunday afternoon to go sit in the old buck hut and uh, watch the Bills game, watch football. Yeah. I mean, that would work for a west wind. Yeah. You know, it's supposed to be raining, it looks like, too. Rain uh, good. I'm probably thinking I won't be hunting on Sunday afternoon because um, between the Bills game and then the fact that it gets light so or dark so late that then I have to go to work on Sunday night. Mm. So I don't really like to try not to get myself too involved in anything on Sunday nights, especially in the early season. So yeah, I'm probably looking at potentially Friday afternoon and then almost definitely Saturday morning and then possibly Sunday morning too. So Emma's been bugging me. She wants to go out, but we need to get a, um, we need to get that two man stand put together and hung. But I, I got that two man ladder stand that I want to hang. And, and uh, so she has a place to go. So, yeah. So maybe I might be working on that on Saturday. Well, I don't think we have a whole lot on the agenda, so maybe we'll, Wander over. Probably not, but maybe we will. We never know. Just picked up. I'm excited. I'm excited to uh, try out them buck huts. Yeah. Me too. We just. Uh, I just picked up a new trailer today, so I can haul my side by side around. I'm pretty fired up about that. That thing is unbelievable. All aluminum, weighs six six hundred, just about six hundred pounds. And the tongue weight on it is only 60 pounds, at, you know, at the tongue. So I can just, I picked it up and just wheeled it, you know, and I'm not some, I'm not some big Hercules like the two of you gentlemen. So you're just a salesman. I'm just a salesman with soft hands. And, you know, you can tell I got soft hands when, you know, a week and a half after a, a high country hunt where you don't really wash your hands and your hands are exposed to the elements, like my skin's just falling off. It's just not good. Soft, man. I'm soft. I think you should take that new trailer and mount your, one of your buck huts right to it and this. Just driving yeah, around, like just a shiny up. stainless or a shiny aluminum trailer out in the middle of a field with a huge thing on it. Yep, sounds mm-hmm. sounds like a great, actually not a half bad idea. But, um, is there any questions? I know we st- we still got some listeners on here. Anybody got any questions or anything we want to cover here before we wrap it up? I want to try to keep it at about an hour. I haven't seen anything else roll through. No. Nope. You got anything in closing, Dallas or? Or Big Willie, are you are you still on? Oh, I just say. Oh. Go ahead, Dale. I just say, uh, good luck to everybody this season. It, it's almost time, so let's get after it. It's feeding time. Yep. It's yeah, time, right. time to feed them. So is this uh, is this going to be your format for the? Uh, reading of radio series throughout the season? Are we going to uh, do this like uh, on a weekly basis? Or? It's a great question. I didn't even I didn't even put you up to that. So, yeah, so this is this is our game plan. Um, this was kind of our, you know, dry run. We'd never, never, uh, we haven't used it since July, and they've made some updates to it. Um, really like the Bullhorn platform. So I think this is what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to target every Wednesday night. There might be stuff that interferes, so we might shift it around, but um, – the best way for people to participate and to listen, if you want to catch it live and hear what's going on um, right then and there uh, and catch it before it gets posted up on our regular podcast channel, um, you can download the Bullhorn app and you can follow Pert in Your Outdoors. And this is a, there's a lot of other cool shows out there. I learned about Bullhorn through GU Unfiltered, uh, which is a podcast Luke Cadillo does uh out of Denver, Colorado, and has some really fun guests on. It has a really entertaining show. He does all his shows live on here. Um, so that's kind of how I learned about this. And um, I think we're gonna we're just gonna give it a shot and see how it goes. I think 
you know, what we've done the last two years has been a lot of work. You know, Jimmy and I have had to, um, you know, get people on the phone, do phone interviews, download the audio, send the audio over the internet. I had to edit things up, compile it. So I think this is a much easier way to do it um, where we can have, if, you know, somebody shoots a deer and, you know, this goes out to everybody who's a, a listener of the podcast or follows us on Instagram you know, we love sharing, having people share their stories of success and how it went down. And, you know, the whole idea of this Breedenham Radio is that we talk about what happened the last weekend. And then, you know, you can get ready for what's coming up for the upcoming weekend. So, um, yeah, we definitely want people to engage and uh, and call in. Uh, we'll schedule stuff. If you shoot something, we might reach out to you and say, hey, would you like to jump on and share your story? Uh, that sort of thing. But this is meant to be kind of a, a fun once a week uh, get together where we can all kind of tell stories from the past weekend and uh, kind of talk about what's going on in the deer woods live action uh, right here up in upstate New York. So, and really basically anywhere in New York, PA, uh, New England region and uh, anybody else who wants to call in. So. Yeah, I think this will be an interesting format to try out. I mean, like you said, that was a ton of work. We were normally trying to get, you know, three, four kills a week on, mm-hmm. uh, which was normally two, three, four nights a week of calling somebody on Zoom. And yep. normally hunting conversations do not go very short. So uh, this will be fun to try this out. I mean, we can always still, if somebody's got a hell of a story or killed a hell of a buck, we could always jump on and record one for a regular podcast. But yeah. I think for the most part, this would work to get, get us through the season and do it all as a community and not – try to separate it all out yeah no doubt and this is something that you know you can use jimmy um dallas can use if any of you guys want to do a show with somebody that's interesting to you you know you can use this login and you can do a show and record it you can do it live and you can have people interact with the guests so it's something different um there's a like i said in our intro to the podcast i just posted today um there's just so many hunting podcasts out there and so many um that are you know having guests on and talking about, you know, strategy and this and that. Um, but not a lot that's solely focused for, you know, our area here in upstate and in kind of this region of the country. And it's just something different. An interactive show, uh, I think is something cool to do. And, uh, we got to try to find a way to be different because there's so many choices out there for people right now. If we're not doing something different, why would they tune in? So that's kind of why we're doing what we're doing with this and super excited to have this bullhorn platform to do it on. So, that's that. Download the app, Bullhorn FM, in your app store. You can join us each week. How do you comment? I've been trying to figure out how to comment on here for about 20 minutes. I don't know. How do you? I have all, no idea. All I have is the chat bar, the question bar, and then underneath it just says her. I think that's all it is, is you, got, you have call-ins, chat, or questions. And I could pre-post questions. Um, yeah, see, Dallas says, like this, Jim. Yeah, oh, it says co-host, co-host can't comment because you're not that smart. So thank you, Sam. But it, that's coming. Wow, Sam is on it. So Sam is um, – Sam yeah, and Big speed. Show. Sam and Big Show are both uh, big wigs over there at Bullhorn. So <laughs> they're, they're two of our eight listeners right now, but I appreciate the heck out of those guys for tuning in and uh, helping us navigate through this and figure it all out. So it's good stuff. Yeah, I like this. It seems good. Yep. All right, we'll uh, we'll wrap her up. Uh, Dallas, uh, Big Willie, and Big Jim, thanks for jumping on to our uh, first episode of Breeding and Radio Season 3. And uh, good luck to everybody this weekend. Shoot straight and uh, keep feeding them. Knock them down. Yeah, see ya. Feed them. Bye, guys. See ya.